Right guys, so you join me today at the wonderful Laurels uh, Pond in Lindham Lakes. Now, we're gonna do a little short waggler fishing with paste. Now it's something I've done before, uh, but it's coming into a little bit better, better weather and it's something on, on venues where there's big fish in open waters like there is today. It can be really devastating and, and doing it on a rod sometimes when they are really big fish just allows you to let them swim out. So what we're going to do is jump to another clip that I've just filmed before this where I was testing out the seat uh, from MIDI and we hooked into an absolute monster. Roll that clip. Alright guys, into the fish. Not very happy about being up. That is for sure. I don't have the drag on super light, but light enough to let them make a first run when they're in, they're in close. But this one is taking advantage of that big time. I must say, you've got to be sometimes got to be careful when you've got other anglers around. But we've got a bit of space today. Feels quite a heavy fish. The question is, is it going to fit in my net? Might need Mr. Jackson to procure me another net because I don't think this one's going to go in it as we were fishing for smaller fish. Sometimes, guys, this is why it's good to have the paste waggler on because when you get fish like this, they can do a little bit of running. And if you get a pole, Jesus, is uh, definitely having a go up there.
that guy so you can see an absolute beast gotta be close to 20 pound if not into 20 pound figures what an absolute unit let's get him back right guys so you can see what an unbelievable beast that was um and fishing sat on a chair lovely and comfy uh, with this same setup we're doing now now the, the chair review is done uh, we're going to try and continue that session um we'll go through trying to catch one first and then we'll have a little look through the gear and talk a bit around what's different around it when fishing a pace waggler now like i say it, it, it's first of may today so we're still you know it has been a bit windy and a bit rainy and today's been quite sunny to be honest um so fingers crossed there's more where that first one came from um which would be fantastic um but only time will tell and there's a few there's a few different reasons that i fish the paste waggler and there's a few reasons that it, it sometimes can be better than fishing um it on the on the on the pole and we'll go we'll go into that as as we uh, continue It's been hooked just yet. Very lively F1. Oh, it's a monster of an F1. An absolute monster of an F1, that is. Blum, isn't it? Jesus. That is a huge F1. Matthew. That is quite possibly, definitely, the biggest F1 I have ever seen in my life. That is massive. So much so that I'm going to ask Matty to come over because I need a photo of it. It's massive. I have never ever ever guys girls caught an f1 that big in my life i caught a big one on benny's once in a match but still it was not the size of this f1 big, that. that is right. a huge f1 Isn't it? Yeah. Hold on, you come. no Stay. There we go, guys. That is an absolute wedge. I can't believe the size of it. Well, oh, guys, the paste waggler. We've uh, had an absolute munter of a carp early doors on it, sat on the uh, the midi chair. We've had another few F1s and, a sm and small carp, but then an absolute colossal. F1. Let's get back in, see if we can have something else.
Not a rapid bike, guys. F1, I think. <laughs> Rapidly took, took that. <laughs> they took Rob off rest. These little F1s are crazy. So guys, a few things we do differently. I'll talk about the paste a little bit later on. But, what we like to do is have a rest so we can just drop the feed, the, the, uh, feed down and it allows us a nice way of presenting. So that's dropped in now and I'm just gonna tighten the line up. So that I can have the rod at a slight angle. And that means that the wind's slightly blowing off our shoulder and that's keeping the line tight, but without towing the float under. Now we use, a, I, I, I tend to use, although you can if it's karma, um, a little stubby midi float, uh, sort of pellet waggler float. And I do that because it's really stable it's, it, it's very buoyant um, and you can put a big piece of paste on it and it seems to work really well as a little paste float. Most paste bites are pretty savage um, and you know they're under and it's easy to detect but it just gives a little bit of stability um, and, and I've, I've used it for quite a while doing the paste waggler. Now I'm going to keep my hand over here because twice now it's gone flying under while I've been turned around to talk to the camera. So, what the, the, the second rule of, of so that's obviously the setup of how I do it. The second rule for me is having a clutch not light but semi light. Now you've got to be careful if you've got other anglers around, of course. Um, Matt's fishing a good two pegs to my left, um, so he's out my way and there's nothing to my right. But as you can see in front of me, I've got a lot of open water. Now there's two reasons why I, I, I like to, to, to do that is one because it allows the fish to move away from where I'm fishing as it's close in um, and the other reason is that it allows the fish to go on its initial run um, nice and smoothly and I can tighten that drag up as we go. Now I, I always find that that for me is the sort of the best way of doing it and I've done this um, in other situations as well if I'm fishing a short feeder um, or if I'm a short bomb, uh, I tend to do the same with a, with a light drag. And again, it stops you cracking fish off as well. It stops you, you know, knackering your feeder, but it also stops if you get a wraparound bite or something that takes off and you've got a really tough drag and you're close in, it can also take your rod in, which is not a good. If you've got a bait runner, and um, that would equally work just as good. Um, in that situation, if it's a feeder, but not as a float, because obviously you need to strike. Uh, whereas a feeder or a bomb, you just tend to pick up and wind in. But it seems to seems to be that there's still fish around. Whether these little quick bites that we've had, although they've been proper pace bites, are small carp or small F ones, um, I don't know. But as you saw from earlier, it could be anything. <laughs> And we did actually have a fish just before we we landed that ghosty and um yeah that was um also a decent fish uh, unfortunately it just pulled out maybe just not got a good enough hook hold on it um, and that brings me into my next thing the, 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 it is a little bit more difficult with with paste uh, when you're fishing a waggler to get a, as good hook ratio um, as you would do as a pole because a pole you can you can have the pole across the top um, and some venues where the fish are smaller um, I sometimes do have a, a pole float set up with the waggler um, still but I found when I'm fishing for bigger fish um, that this works the best and if you think this is a, wa a waggler setup 
so it's going straight via the bottom of the waggler right down to where the fish is and uh, we're all, we'll, we'll show you the rigging close of course but I, I fix it with um, float stops uh, extra tight guru ones and there's no shot down the line although I could get away with it today um, as it's about four and a half to five foot deep where we are here which is quite deep for paste if I'm honest um, we could get away with it uh, having having that but we don't uh, we haven't done so far so we'll see how we get on if we continue to miss some bites sometimes a little bit of shot on there just to keep the line taut there we are it's only a small fish I think this time A little F1 or something, this one. Oh, I love a little F1. Beauty. It's a beautiful fish. Come here. Lovely F1. And I did think that, that having felt some of, uh, seeing some of those quick bites that were uh, a few little dotty dots first, I did think we would got a little bit of f1 action going on there which is always nice the only downside is we've got my donkey net on which makes it an elder stretch down for me so just a little tip if you do do that guys and you have got a big net on um like me and you've got short arms just ruffle your netting up in your hands just allows you to get to uh, the hook or where you need to be And there she is. Don't normally play a ball left ones. I don't think this one's any different, so we'll we'll give it a go and see. See, <laughs> see if the uh... go on, Mr. F1. YouTube wants to see you. Steady yourself. Steady yourself, son. There we go. Lovely, lovely F1. As you can see, Giddy and Giddy, Giddy wants to go back. And it's just about repeating the process, so let's get the camera in close and have a look at the rig and the bait and uh, see how we're catching them. Right guys, so the gear, the trusty bullet Garbolino cart match 10 foot. This beast as I go on about it all the time, it's caught me so many fish, so many big fish. Um, like I say today, that one 20 pound virtually uh, today, um, no problem. And it just keeps going, it's the gift that keeps going. And that's rigged up with uh, probably four times the size, the most, <laughs> four times the price of the rod, a parabolic um, 4000. And I think for me, that's what helps it on having a really good quality reel. The, the rods you know good enough but the reel is where the where the uh, where it where it's at uh, and that's got a seven pound um daiwa hypersensor is on this one and you know just a perfect little combo uh, for what we're trying to do today for jackson we're in then um i've got a little small eight inch hook link and it's down to an extra strong 12 matrix hook um really really strong um and that little bit of hook link um is 022 so it is strong and ugh, going down the line like i said there's nothing down the line and we could get away with doing that today we could have a little bit down the line probably should if it were a little bit uh, windier we, we, we may do that um and then that goes down to the float now the float like i said is a little um midi stubby pellet stubby this is a two ssg um and it's got one guru extra type pellet um, stop above it a uh, rig stop a float stopper and two extra tights below it just so we don't get any movement and it's as simple as that now the bait as you can see it's a little bit firmer a lot firmer than you used to see me fish um 
and it is the red adrenaline baits as I always use um, oh well I, I, I tend to use the adrenaline baits now for my, most of my pace fishing and what you'll notice let's get it rolled up in a ball what you'll notice is although it's tacky it, it is a lot firmer and if it's if it's not firm enough when we put it on the hook it'll drop off um, just due to the weight of it and obviously the hook pulling through it we don't want that so what we need to do is to make sure that it is enough we don't i don't want to make it like a brick um, but it does need to be firm enough that it stays on the hook when we cast it in so what we'll do is we'll go back out we'll see if we can have a, another fish or two um and fingers crossed there'll be another one of them massive ones waiting for us but who knows who knows we've up to today um and got one in so let's just see <clears throat> if there's one waiting for us uh, to uh, slide him in there's one of the fish like a little left one it is Still those little bites typical f1 bites that one when you uh, when you have the carp there's no messing about they're straight on it's a fat one perfectly up in that top lip absolutely bob on Perfectly hooked. Right guys, well hopefully that's shown you how deadly it can be, but also versatile. If you're a person that doesn't like fishing the pole and you want to fish a waggler but you like to, the thought of a pole fish, of pace fishing, then this is for you, then give it a go. Uh, hopefully you'll, uh, you'll catch a few and uh, i hopefully will catch a few more later on into this afternoon so thank you very much for watching if you want to watch any of the other videos go on the youtube channel on the uh, playlist and have a gander through there on angling for you if you want to come on to facebook and join the family ask questions then it's angling for you on the facebook and if you want to just look at the photos and see what we're up to angling underscore for you on instagram if you could like share and subscribe that'd be superb and until the next one thank you very much for watching Tablands. Thank you.